Good morning, afternoon, or evening, y'all. My name is Shannon, and today we are going to be doing kind of a bookshelf tour slash library tour slash how I just organize my library and all of my books on my seven shelves and book cart, which... Oh my god, there's a spider. One second. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. No! Oh, uh, uh. oh my god. Oh my god. Anywho, I have a lot of books, as I've discussed previously, and with having as many books as I have, I have created a very intricate, in my opinion, system of how I organize them. So let's just get started. These two shelves are my biggest fantasy section. If you watched my counting my physical TBR video, you would know 95% of the books on these shelves I have not read. So just keep that in mind. Um, we have all of my V.E. Schwab books, minus that one. And then we have Sarah El Reefy, the Drowning Empire series, one of my Book of the Month books. I don't know what this duology is called, but it's the Heart of the Sun Warrior and Daughter of the Moon Goddess. And then also, this shelf over here is, I'm pretty sure it's all YA. And then this one is primarily adult fantasy. And then I have Fire and Blood, which is part of the whole uh, Game of Thrones series. Uh, just some miscellaneous books. Samantha Shannon's Priory of the Orange Tree and A Day of Fall and Night. Another Samantha Shannon book. She Who Became the Sun. Some more first books in the series. And then I have the second and third books in the Atlas series. And you'll figure out in a little bit where the first one is. Down here we have some sci-fi. So it's Light from Uncommon Stars, The House in the Cerulean Sea, When Women Were Dragons. Then I just have a mishmash of books. We got The Foxglove King, Proggy Tale Mary, Babel, The City We Became, and Book of Night by Holly Black. Then again, just some miscellaneous books that belong to series. Now, these three bottom shelves right here, this little L, that's all thrillers and mysteries. So I'm going to go to my YA shelf before we dive into that. So we have Our Violent Ends, the Wilderwood duology, the Dance of Thieves duology, Poster Girl, the Poppy War trilogy, Ace of Spades, if you've ever heard of it, The Iron Widow, Grace Year, Fahrenheit 451, a classic. Um, and the Deadly Education series. I think it's called like a Golden Scholomance series or something. And then down here, let me just bring you guys a little closer so you can see the book that I have on display here. It is A Curse for True Love. This is the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition. I got it solely because of the foiling on it, which is The Ballad of the Archer and the Fox. If you know, you know. Then we just have, um, I don't know what this series is called, but it's by Victoria Aveyard, who also wrote this series, the Red Queen series. And then we, I don't know what this is called either, This Vicious Grace. Then we have a myriad of, I don't want to say standalones, but a lot of them are the first books in the series right here, except for this one, Lightstruck, which is the second book in a series. And then we have the Red Queen series, Monsters Born and Made, and Defend the Dawn, which is the second book in what I believe is a duology. It might be a trilogy, but I'm not certain. And then we have the Serpent and Dove books. Then we have two retellings, one for Cinderella and one for Alice in Wonderland, A Winner's Promise, a werewolf book. I honestly don't know if this is YA. I don't think so, but whatever. Then we have Her Majesty's Royal Coven and Witch Haven and Hotel Magnifique. Then we have Cassandra Clare books, The Darkening, 
Lore, which I've heard really, really incredible things about. And then I got, okay, don't judge me. I've heard horrible things about this series, but I've also heard really good things about this series. So I only bought the first book of The Kingdom of the Wicked. I am very apprehensive to read that book, but I'm intrigued. Um, and again, these are just the first books in series, I believe. And then we have another Olive Blake book and Furyborn, which is, again, the first in a series. Now, I'm actually gonna lower you guys down. Also, I don't know if you guys picked up on this yet, but my books are pretty color-coded, and I know that some people kind of diss on color coding books because it's like not real organization or it doesn't show like the mark of a real reader like I've literally heard these things said to me before and if you honestly believe that that's just weird like it makes my brain satisfied to see them color coded and if you have a problem with that that's your own issue anywho on my last YA fantasy shelf in this vicinity of my library we have a couple more series we have the hazelwood series the first book in these hollow vows i have the first two books in the prison healer trilogy um again you might be able to tell that there are only some books in this section that i have the second book in the series of and that will make more sense in a couple minutes then we have the Light Lark series, uh, the Hellbent series, uh, Broken Blade, which I think sounds absolutely phenomenal. And then Vampire Book, Cinderella Retelling, Jade City, and Red Rising. Now, on to arguably my favorite section. Not because of the books, but just because of how color-coded and nice it looks. I literally love this little shelf in my library so much. If you can see this. I feel like that this is literal art on my shelves. I have so many miscellaneous mystery and thriller books, but they're kind of madly coded. I also have multiple Alice Feeney books just throughout my whole collection. I think this section is the only one in which I don't care about keeping authors together. So we have Alice Feeney here, Alice Feeney here. We have Alice Feeney up here too, which I'll get into in a second. This is probably my favorite series out of all of these. It is the, I don't know exactly what the series is called, but they're all murder mysteries based on Jane Austen books, which I just think is hilarious. Like it's Pride and Premeditation, Sense and Second Degree Murder, and Manslaughter Park. And those are all YA, if you were wondering. But I just think that's hilarious, in all honesty. There's honestly not much to say about my mystery thriller section because there's just a mishmash of everything in here. The only way that I really organize these is by color. I've also only read one of them out of all of these in this section. It's so like... I don't have too much to say about them. And then this is the last little mystery thriller section. If you couldn't tell, this is by far the genre I own the least of. Um, I have my Stephen King books, some YA mysteries, and then I think some of these are horror books as well, but I'm not too, too sure. And I also keep my extra records down here because, let me show you guys, I keep my record player on top of my bookshelves. My dog is like playing right in the middle of my tripod, so I'm being very careful not to step on her. But this is probably my, mm, no, I'm not going to say this is my favorite section. This is my favorite genre, but this shelf is all romance books. These shelves are all literary fiction books, so let's get into it. Again, I really try to keep authors and series together for the rest of my shelves. Let's get started. 
I have the Hoops series by Kennedy Ryan, Tell Me Lies, The Gram Effect by L. Kennedy. I literally love that book. I'm so excited for the Dixon Rule to come out. We have The Brightest Light of Sunshine, Full Tilt, Seven Year Slip, Kiss Quotient, Swear on This Life, The Siren of Sussex, and then we just have all of my Eden's series books. Then down here we have Eligible, You Again, The Spanish Love Deception, and The American Roommate Experiment. I'm kind of nervous to read those because I've heard very mixed opinions on both of them. Only Love Can Hurt Like This, All Fired Up, Summer Reading, The Proposal, Mrs. Nash's Ashes, Alone With You in the Ether by Olive Blake. I've heard so many wonderful things about that book. The Friend Zone, B The Bodyguard, Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers. That is not in the right section. Um, then I have all of my Lucy Score books besides the Knock em Out series, which is in a different section. <laughs> then down here, we have some random books. Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. I have not read that. I've read one Colleen Hoover book and I did not enjoy it so I'm really nervous to read any more. Then I have my Christina Lauren books, Seven Days in June, my Alyssa Sussman books, my Tessa Bailey books, my Rachel Lynn Solomon books, Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. I loved this book. Then we have You Deserve Each Other, The Kiss Curse, and Before We Were Strangers. Now, this is when it becomes a little messier, I want to say. Again, they're still color-coded down here. Just, like, it's a new color-coding section, if you guys can pick up, up on that. We have Love In Other Words. I really enjoyed this book, but I don't like cheating trope. Y'all already know this. Flat Share. I... That book was alright. Falling for Temptation. I adored that book. I adored the couple. I adored everything about them. Then we have The Summer of Broken Rules and Maybe Meant to Be. I also enjoyed both of those very much. And then November 9th, which made me want to throw up. Um, then we have Marriage for One, Darling Venom, Didn't Love, Little Weird, Last Time We Met, Undertaking a Part in Mercy, An Heiress's Guide to Deception and Desire, Grayson's Vow, My Life with the Walter Boys. I, okay, I read this book, I really enjoyed it, but the ending was so wildly unfinished that I rated it three stars. Then we have the first two book in the Royals series, The Love Wager. Then I have the first two books in the Bromance Book Club series. We have In a Jam, The Last Letter, Travis and the Summer I Turned Pretty series. Now, one more section before we move on to the literary fiction shelf. This is as zoomed in as you're gonna get on this shelf because I don't feel like dealing with the camera. Anywho, we have the Fifty Shades of Grey series, Ivy by Will and Ash, Hunt the Cat and Mouse duet. I did read this. I honestly skipped part one of the second book just because I didn't think I could stomach it and I was right but other than that I did relatively enjoy the series. Then we have A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime. I have spoken about this author in the past. I did enjoy that book but I think that was a fluke and I will quite literally never be picking up another Monica Murphy book in my entire life. Then we have the Neon Gods series, and then just a bunch of... I don't know how to say it. These are, like, my spicy, inappropriate books that are, like, not even, like, that can't even be passed off as, like, fluffy and cute, and so I put them down here. That's what that is. Also, this section should be looking relatively familiar to you guys because this is where I film all my videos. Anywho, I don't have too much to say about this section because... This is not my primary genre. I barely read any books from this genre. But I will say, I have my Frederick Bachman books. I do have Yellow Face. I'm actually really intrigued to read that. Um, let's see. I do have A Little Life, but this book is Bible thin and super f long. And I don't know if I have the patience to read a literary fiction book, which is already a genre I don't love, for 800 pages. 
and that is supposed to tear my heart out of my chest. Let's see, what else? I have my Taylor Jenkins read books. Um, I really don't have a lot to say about this section except down here. I am literally not able to zoom you guys in really because my chair is right here. But this whole shelf down here is primarily classic literature. So we have The Beautiful and the Damned, Grimm's Fairy Tales, Jane Eyre, Pride and Prejudice, The Journals of Sylvia Plath. Um, then right here are my Penguin Clothbound Classics. Y'all know I love my Penguin Clothbound Classics and I really want to collect more of them. But down here I have Moby Dick, Little Woman, The Iliad. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and A Christmas Carol. And then I have all of Jane Austen's primary publications. A Dowry of Blood, I did rate this book five stars. It triggered me in a lot of ways, I'm not even gonna lie, but it provided such a catharsis and I would recommend it to anyone that has been in a rough relationship. Anywho, that's all I really have to say in terms of these books. Also, as I said, I'm giving you guys a kind of library tour while we're doing this. So over here, we actually have a little Polaroid wall for all, or I shouldn't say all, for some of my favorite books because I made this like over half a year ago now. Anywho, uh, let's go to probably my most visited shelf. This is what I like to refer to as my TBR shelf. Don't get me wrong. Like I have said before, if you have seen my Counting My Physical TBR video, you know how bad it is and how many books I have on my physical TBR. Book buying is a hobby just as much as reading books and all that jazz. But this is a way for me to kind of collect my thoughts because if I just look for a book within my shelves I will end up staring at them for hours. So I have a collected area of books that I am most looking forward to getting to right now what I'm most in the mood for. This shelf changes out constantly. I actually just did some work on it today to add some summer books and summer reading and all that kind of jazz because it is officially the first day of spring and yeah. So let's just get started. So up here we have some of my favorite poetry books that I read just every once in a while and then I also have the annotated copy of Pride and Prejudice. This is a very large book because each page has a page along with it that annotates and explains everything that's being said which I feel like is very good to kind of bridge the divide in the language barrier from old English to current English. Then we have some of the Bronte books. So we have Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, and The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, A Lady's Guide to Scandal, and the Bridgerton series. So this is kind of a like old section. Like it dates back, if that makes sense. Then we have this section, which is where, as you, you can tell, the Rainbow Starts. So we have two of Abby Jimenez's books. We have Yours Truly and Part of Your World. Then we have 99% Mine, Same Time Next Summer. We have all of Emily Henry's books. Carrie Soto is Back, Alex Approximately, One Italian Summer. All of Ali Hazelwood's, like, original publications, kind of, before she branched into fantasy and YA. So we have The Love Hypothesis, Love on the Brain and Love Theoretically. We have a very cute picture of me and my sister from when we were younger. Then we have the Kings of Sin series by Anne Huang, The Simple Wild, Pack of the Moon, The Paper Palace, Tales from the Hinterland, and Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. Then we have the Addicted Slash Callaway Sister series. I am very slowly 
but surely getting through this series. I've only read the first book, but I'm trying to work my way through. Then we have Love Redesign, Things We Left Behind, Someone Who Loves You in All Your Damage Glory, A Hundred Other Girls, both of Carly Fortune's books, Mr. Wrong Number, The Next Door Nemesis, The No Show, A Not So Meet Cute, Love and Olives, Barefoot, In the Weeds, Mixed Signals, Girl Abroad. I'm actually currently reading this. Hopefully a reading vlog will be in the future. And then Crazy Stupid Bromance, which is the third book in the Bromance Book Club series. Now, if you couldn't pick up those first three shelves, were very romance based so we have a little more variety in the last two shelves over here we do have more romance though and then we have if he had been with me if only i had told her the dreamland billionaire series funny feelings praise i'm actually gonna start that book tonight because why did no one tell me it was an ex's dad romance anywho we have Beautiful and Walking Disaster, Mary Jane. I actually really want to get to that book because it's based in the summer and it kind of reminds me of how I was brought up because I grew up not too far from Baltimore and I think it'll be really interesting. Then we have The Roughest Draft, The Hating Game, Malibu Rising, The Other Mothers, Falling Away, The Mindfuck series, The Wolf Den, and then there were none, Defy the Night, Legendborn, We Hunt the Flame, Curious Tides, Portrait of a Thief, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, and the last two books in the Carval series, What Happens After Midnight, and Powerless. Now, final section down here. Again, I will not be lowering you guys because I don't feel like it, but we have The Violence, which sounds so, so good. If you haven't heard of it, please read into it because... I, it's very much about feminine rage and I'm very excited to read that. Girl Serpent Thorn, Ninth House, The Appeal, All of Us Villains, Heartless, Dune, really need to get to that for obvious reasons. Um, Gone Girl, Mirror Girls, The Secret History, The City of Brass, The Book Eaters, The Atlas Six, Immortal Longings, Ruthless Vows, The Six of Crows duology, All of Our Hidden Gifts, and The Echo of Old Books. Now, we only have three more book sections to check out and we're good. So, this is my kind of favorite fantasy shelf. So, any fantasy books that I either love or really, really want to get to are on this shelf. So, we have the Akatar series. We also have my collector's edition of the Akatar. I adore this series. I think Akamore is the best personally but they do not sell collector's editions for those. Anywho, then we have the Crescent City series, the original Throne of Glass covers, then we have the new Throne of Glass covers, the Barnes & Noble special edition covers of Crescent City, which I think are beautiful and I really, really hope they release a version of it for the third book as well. Then we have the This Woven Kingdom series, uh, Swordcatcher, The Hurricane Wars, and Belladonna. Then down here I have my Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of Divine Rivals that says Dear Iris. I obviously have that displayed. Then I have the Shepherd King duology, The Cruel Prince, uh, River Enchanted duology, the first book in Once Upon a Broken Heart because I'm waiting for the paperbacks to come out, and then my one of my favorite series ever, the Harry Potter series. I have a full reading vlog on my channel for this series if you want to check it out. Then we have the second and third books in the Cruel Prince trilogy. We have the Shadow and Bone trilogy. We have the entire Lunar Chronicles series and the Hunger Games series, Wild and Wicked Things, and the entire Shatter Me series. I adore the Shatter Me series so much. And then down here, we just have my Twilight books. Now, down here, real quick, this is my TBR cart. Not a whole lot of books on here, just because I try to keep just my monthly TBR on this cart. That never ends up happening. There are definitely more books than all my TBR on this cart. Okay, now, we are now on my last section of books I have to show you guys. This is absolutely my favorite section in my whole library. 
because these are for the most part all five star books i only display some of my absolute favorite books on this shelf and let's just get into it so first we have the exclusive edition of archer's voice i adore this book it is the book that got me into romance then we have Dumb and Dusted, It Happened One Summer, Hook, Line, and Sinker, and the original Archer's Voice has all my original annotations. Obviously, this series is displayed front and center on this shelf. This is my favorite book of all time. There is another book that comes really close to it, but we'll be getting to that in a second. Next, down here, we have the first two books in the Knock em Out series. I loved them both. The second one isn't five stars, but I feel like they have to be together. Then we have By a Thread, Red, White, and Royal Blue, Icebreaker, and Wildfire. Again, Icebreaker I rated five stars. Don't know that I would now. Wildfire wasn't five stars for me, but I want them to be together. Daisy Jones and the Six and One in Rome. Then down here, we just have all of my Mariana Zapata books that I actually own physical copies of. I have not read all of them, but I do love Mariana Zapata and I wanted her to have her own section in this little area. Next, this is my only little thriller section in this thing. If you saw my reading thrillers for 24 hours, you would have saw me read Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. I absolutely adore this book. It is so close to being a five stars. I just absolutely loved it. And then I also have my Inheritance Games series in here. Not five stars, but I had to display some kind of mystery books. Anyhow. Then down here, we have one of my favorite series, the Twisted series. I actually have a signed Twisted Love copy, which I just absolutely adore. And Twisted Hate is the only five-star book in here for me. But again, they have to be together. Next, this is the Never After series. I've discussed endlessly how much I adore Hooked by Emily McIntyre. That book is like crack. I could reread it a thousand times over. Anyhow, then... This is the only book, this is the only series that comes even remotely close to the Magnolia Parks series for me, and it is the Boys of Toman series. Binding 13 is like 1% lower than Daisy Hates the Great Undoing for me. I will never get over this series. I need to continue reading this series, and I'm so excited for Taming 7 to come out. Anywho. The last little books we have in this section are the Chestnut Springs series. All of them are almost or are five stars for me, so they just had to be together in this section. It just made the most sense to me. Anywho, as I said, I was also going to be showing you just around my library for this. So let me show you just what's on the wall above my little five star section. It is just a bunch of artwork that I have gotten. We have the Surreal Tea House, which I honestly just think is absolutely hilarious. This is kind of the, I don't want to say undercover, but like discreet book merch that I really enjoy. Because if you just saw the flower market thing, you would never guess that this is Akatar merch, but that is for Valaris. And then down here we have one for Baskias. And this, which is my favorite quote from any book ever. But yeah, that is how I organize my books. I sincerely hope that this video wasn't too boring. I know it's probably going to be a pretty long video just because going through all these books takes a good amount of time. My throat actually hurts from how much I've been talking, which I'm so sincerely sorry if this video is like 45 minutes long but if you stuck around to the end of this video thank you so much i sincerely appreciate you guys being here i really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe all my social media will be linked down below for you guys 
make sure you turn on the post notification bell so you guys can get notified right when I post a new video. I hope you all are having an absolutely wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!